The most tedious part of building any app is authentication. And it sucks because usually to start fast, you have to accept this trade-off that as your app grows and becomes more mature, you'll have to migrate off to a much more complicated solution. But it doesn't really make sense to start with a complicated solution because you need to get users to justify the, the app's existence in the first place. So WorkOS came to me and showed me this new tool they're working on called AuthKit. And what AuthKit is intended to do is bridge that gap. It's a hosted user management service to start but then you can opt out of the hosted part and do fully custom UI. You can add enterprise features like SSO. So it sort of grows with you. We're going to add AuthKit into a Next14 app. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get into the code. I'm Jason Langsdorf. Let's learn something new. To enable authentication, head over to the WorkOS dashboard and click this authentication tab. And then just make sure that at least one of these is checked. So we want this hosted UI. I set up Google OAuth and Microsoft OAuth. You can also add email password if you want, single sign-on and so on and so forth, all just work. Once this is set, make sure you've got localhost 3000 slash callback set as a redirect because we're gonna use that inside the app. We're gonna be working off of the next AuthKit example repo. But because I want to walk through how we're actually implementing AuthKit instead of here, where it's already implemented for you, we're going to be working off of my fork and a start branch. So that's what you want to clone. You want to go to the jlangsdorf slash next dash AuthKit dash example. Check out this start branch. And that's what we've done. So the first thing that we want to do is let's open up the .env.local.example. And inside here, we're going to need the WorkOS client ID API key redirect URI, which is this localhost 3000 slash callback that we set earlier, and then a JWT secret key. And we'll talk about what this one means a little bit later on. So for the client ID and API key, you can go back into your WorkOS dashboard. We're going to head into the API keys. You get your client ID right here and you get an API key by clicking this button right here. And once those are set, you're going to rename this file to .env.local, put those values in, and then you're going to save. Jot secret key just needs to be a value that only you will know. And it's for security, so it needs to be secret, but it doesn't actually matter what it is. So what I did is I went to this site, Online UUID Generator. It's at uuidgenerator.net. And every time you refresh this page, it generates one of these keys, and it's secret enough. So I copied one of these, threw it in as the key here, and we're good to go. So close that, and then you can start this by running npm run dev. Once it's running at localhost 3000, you can see this stripped down version. So right now, the sign-in doesn't work. It just links a uh, hashtag login. And if you go to the account, it'll show you the account, but there are no account details because we're not logged in. Our first step is going to be making these buttons work. And to do that, we're going to get an authorization URL out of AuthKit using the WorkOS Node SDK. Inside our project here, open up the auth.ts file in source slash auth.ts. So our first change is to export the WorkOS client by creating a new instance of the WorkOS SDK. And that's using that API key that we set in .env.local. Next, we want to create our authorization URL. So to do that, we're going to create a new function called get authorization URL. This grabs our redirect URI and make sure that it's set. Next, it gets into the user management APIs in the WorkOS SDK, and we're going to call the get authorization URL method. We're going to pass in the client ID, which is the one we set in our environment variables. We pass in the redirect URI, which is also out of our environment variables. And then setting the provider to AuthKit means we're going to take advantage of that hosted UI. There are other ways that we can do this. We'll talk about them briefly at the end of this video, but there are more details in the docs, which are linked in the description below. Once we've got this authorization URL, we can return that. And that's the link that if you click it, it'll take you to that hosted AuthKit UI to either sign up or sign in to your account. Now that we've got a way to create an authorization URL, we need to use it. To do that, we're going to go to our sign in button.tsx, which is in the app components directory. Inside here, we need to import that get authorization URL function that we just created. And then we're going to replace this hard coded authorization URL with a call to our new function, which will get a live authorization URL. So we can save that. Now, if we head back out here and we hover, we can see that this is now going to go to a long workos.com hosted URL. If I click that, it pulls up the host hosted UI. And this lets me log in either with an email address or Google or Microsoft. I'm going to use Google. 
sign in with my account here. And when I come back, you can see that it redirected us to that redirect URI that we set of localhost 3000 slash callback. And it gave us a code. And this code is an authorization code that says, yes, this user did in fact authorize us to use this app. So we need to implement a handler that will take that code and exchange it for the user details. So to do that, head back into the code and open up the source app callback route.ts. And inside you can see that it's just a placeholder right now. So we're going to update that and we want to first we're going to bring in our get jot secret key which is uh, pulling in that secret key from the environment variables the work os client and the client id from the environment variables and those all come out of that auth ts we're also going to bring in a helper called sign jot from a package called jose jose is really useful because it gives us a lot of capabilities for creating managing verifying etc when it comes to json web tokens which is uh, the jwt jot and that is going to allow us to make sure that the user is not only signed in, but that their token is valid and signed by our Jot secret key, which means that we can trust it. So inside this handler, we're going to first grab the code that we got right out of the search params. And if we have one, we're going to use the authenticate with code method out of the user management APIs, pass in our client ID and the code we received, and that gives us back the user details. Now, those are useful, but we need to put them into a token. So putting them into a token means that we're going to sign a JOT, put in our user details. So then we tell Jose what type of JOT token we want. This is the algorithm we're using to sign it. We need to set an issued time. We need to make sure that it expires after an hour. And finally, we sign it using our secret key. And that's going to all be stored in this token variable here. Then we grab the current URL, clone that, delete the code, change the path name to the home page, and set it up as a redirect. And the last thing we're going to do here is set our token as a cookie and we can make it HTTP only because we're using server rendering. And then we return that response, which will redirect a now logged in user back to the home page. So let's save this and let's try our login flow again. So I'm going to sign in with AuthKit. I'm going to use my email. And now instead of failing, it redirects me to the home page. Nothing's happening yet because we haven't updated the UI. If you check the application tab. You're going to see that a token has been created in your cookies for this app. So this is what we'll use to validate validate that a user is in fact logged in and has been verified by our system. So now that we've got the ability to log in and when a user is logged in, we're setting a token for them. We need to pull that token out, verify it, and then update our UI based on that data. So our first step inside AuthTS, we're going to add a function that will verify whether or not that JOT is valid. So this is using the JOT verify method out of Jose, and we're going to pass in our token, pass in our secret key, and that just lets us know if we've got a payload or if something is wrong, it returns null. And that will be used to say, nope, not logged in. Next, we can use this verification function to check if a user is logged in and then return their details. So in this function, we are going to grab that token. We're going to verify it. If they're verified, we send back that they are authenticated and we send back the user's details. So their name, email, et cetera. And if they're not, we just send back they're not authenticated. And that allows us to manage, you know, returning them to the homepage or sending them off to log in or whatever it is we need to do. And finally, we need a way for them to log out. So we're going to create a helper function called clear cookie. This deletes that token cookie and then redirects them to the home page where they will be back in the logged out state. Our next step is going to be to add some middleware. And that middleware is going to be used to only allow a logged in user to view the account page. Right now, if we look at our page, we can head to this account page even when we're logged out and it just shows us no details. So we want to add protection to that. That's where next middleware is going to come in. To do that, we're going to bring in the get authorization URL and the verified JOT token helpers that we created. So inside, we're going to grab the cookies out of the request and then get the token value. Then we're going to verify that. So if the user has a verified token, then we are going to allow them to go to the next page. But if they're not logged in, if they don't have a valid token, we're going to grab that authorization URL and then create a new response that'll redirect them to the URL. And just to make sure, we're gonna clear that token again, just in case they tried to put a junky one or one that had timed out or something like that in there. So now that this is saved, I'm gonna delete this token and then I'm gonna try to navigate to the account page. And because we're not logged in, it's going to send us through to log in. We get back to the home page. I've got a token. And now when I try to go to the account, it'll let me in. Let's actually update the UI now to respond to our logged in user. So first up, let's update the account page. We're going to open up page.tsx inside of that account 
route. So we need to bring in that get user helper that we created, and then we'll replace this hard coded user with the one that comes out of the get user helper. And once we've saved that, if we head back to our homepage, we can see that our account details are populating as expected. However, this sign in button is still saying sign in. So we want to update that to say sign out. So let's head in to our code again, and we're going to open up the sign in button. In addition to the authorization URL, we're also going to need clear cookie and get user. And we can replace this hard coded is authenticated with a call to get user. And now if we save this, it will update to say sign out, but won't do anything if we click it yet. So let's go in and update our server action here to actually log the user out. And the way we're going to do that is by adding in our clear cookie call. So now on this page, if I click sign out, it's going to bounce me out to the sign in page. And if I sign in again, it shows me sign out in both the places where that button is used. So our last step here is to actually update this home page when somebody's logged in. So to do that, let's open up source app page.tsx. Let's bring in the get user helper again. We'll replace these hard coded values with our actual get user call. We can save that so we can see down here where it's actually using that first name. And now when you're logged in, you can see your actual details. So we can view the account. There's our details. Head back to the home page. When we sign out, it replaces it with the sign in details. And that's that's how you do it. This is how AuthKit allows you to set up a fully managed UI for a user management. So if you want to customize this, you can actually customize the whole UI. The hosted UI is just a quick start. And as you want to do more, you can. So if you want to handle a sign up, there is methods in this WorkOS SDK where you can create a user using any form, email, password, first name, last name. And that can be, you know, in this case, it is, I think, completely unstyled, but you can bring in your own design system. You can use tailwind, you can use whatever you want. And they've got examples for all of those things. They also, you might've seen this already when I was when I was showing it here, but in this authentication section, you can also add those enterprise features later on when you get to that point, like single sign-on. And this is all integrated right away. You can just kind of turn these things on and, and they'll just work. So I think that's pretty cool. That's something unique that AuthKit brings to the table. And one of the reasons why I was excited to give it a try and, and you know, show you all about it. AuthKit is interesting because it brings something to the table that I haven't seen before. It's both very, very quick to set that up. It's got that full hosted UI and it's got the ability to scale up to full customization, full enterprise feature set like single sign-on. It does that all without forcing you to migrate either with a huge effort up front to implement the enterprise solution or a huge effort later on to migrate off your easy solution to the full enterprise needs that you have later on. That's neat. I think it's cool. So thank you again to WorkOS for making this video possible. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you subscribe, hit that like button. It's free. It helps me a lot. makes me feel good. And watch this video next. It's going to have more great information like this that I hope you'll enjoy. As always, thanks for hanging out, friends. We'll see you next time.